morning, this is Sharon Ross with Capital City Arts Initiative. We are here at Stewart Indian School filming a video with artists who make beadwork, amazing beadwork, and this Nevada Neighbor series has generous funding from Nevada Humanities and the National Endowment for the Humanities. Enjoy the video. So I'd like to introduce Bobby Rayner. She's the museum director and we'll give you more information on the exhibition and the activities out here at Stewart. Welcome to the Stewart Indian School Cultural Center and Museum. My name is Bobby Rader. I'm the museum director. Um, our hours are 10 to 5, Monday through Friday, closed on state and federal holidays. We hope that you'll come and visit. I'd like to introduce you to some ladies who have been helping us since the beginning of designing this museum. They're on our cultural advisory committee as well as being volunteers here at the museum. Uh, this is Linda Eben Jones and Janice Eben Stump, and they will be talking about their beadwork they, that are featured in a new beadwork exhibit that Melissa Molero uh, Moose has curated for us. Great, thank you, Bobby. Hi, Hi Linda. My name is Linda Eben Jones, and I'm a Stewart alumni, graduated in '66, and um, I started to do a little beading when I was at Stewart, and um, kind of left it and never really got back to it and, and uh, started reading again when uh, my sister was going to school in Institute of American Indian Arts. And so I, we started beading medicine bags and that's how we got going again with our beading. So I wanted to show you some of the pieces that I beaded. Um, just, um, I started to bead my, I have a traditional buckskin dress when I first started beading, I beaded um, roses because that's the only thing I learned how to make, and that's all I did for a while. And then I um, moved on to other things, and I started beading purses, and the purses were um, made for my daughter Melissa because I didn't really have anything to leave her, and I wanted her to have some remembrance of our beading. And so we started to do different doing types of styles of beading, and that's how I got beading purses. Okay, I want to introduce my sister Janice. She um, got me started beading way back when we were in school, so um, she's going to explain some of her work. Hi, Janice. Hi, my name is Janice Eben Stompton. I'm from Reno, Nevada, Paiute, Doi de Gutta. And um, when I was attending Stewart back in 68 to 72, we had a cultural class and we decided to um, start learning how to make earrings and moccasins and and other um, dance regalia and and gifts so that's what we would do and um today i brought um, some moccasins that i made out of smoke tide and i also uh, have a beaded necklace with a uh this is a sort of a Cree design um, from Montana. My sister-in-laws showed me how to bead, showing the mountains and the, and a small dress here is, is something we made for the uh, for the um, display here at the school. And I also have several pieces with the Great Basin Native Artist Show that's here at Stewart right now. And I made some moccasins, and I also beaded a tobacco pouch with a sacred buffalo on it. Um, maybe she'll show you part of this. But as we learned how to be, we learned different styles, different ways. And, you know, we appreciate our teachers because we couldn't learn, you know, they weren't willing to teach us. And um, so you'll see several pieces at the beach show here at the museum. 
and like Linda said, she was watching me one day and we just decided to um, share our information on how to sew things and she's done really well and she's teaching you know, her daughter and her grandson and um, also um, many, many years of sewing, probably over 45 years of sewing and um, just love teaching. Hello, I'm Melissa Malero Moose, and I'm curator for the Great Basin Native Artists Gallery here at Stewart Indian School Cultural Center and Museum. Um, our show here is the Beads, Indigenous Artists of the Great Basin. Um, all of the artists that are in this show are from the Great Basin, mostly Nevada. Um, and we just wanted to show like all of our artwork and our sort of historical and contemporary work that we're showing here. Um, that people are making from all around this region. So the bead show is um, coming to an end here at the end of uh, October. We might actually, uh, uh, we're going to extend it through uh, mid-November. Um, and the next show that we're going to have up is the basket show. Um, and basket themed, so we're going to have um, artwork from artists, uh, like from all mediums, um, as well as basketry. Um, and cradle boards and uh, different sort of contemporary uh, uh, basketry inspired works. My son, he's an eagle dancer, and he had this that's why it has the pyramid on it. But she, he wanted a buffalo on it, too. And the little moccasins I made for a little girl, the pipe design. Linda's piece below that. Actually, I started this in 2019, and it, it was, um, I got an idea to make it for someone that I wanted to give it as a gift. And uh, what it is supposed to be is Fox Peak out in Fallon. Um, our mother is a Toy Dakota from Fallon, so um, we, I wanted to do something um, meaningful to Nevada. So it's supposed to make the peak is supposed to be here and then the tulies in the basket and um, that's what the, it started out to represent but it kind of changed as I went along and, and I changed the, the way I look. So and then this one was done, it was a special piece that I did. Um, we really like quail so one day I decided I'll just feed a quail and so that one kind of came alive that way too. And I'm a new beater, so I um, had to find ways to um, make things look like a quail <laughs> or even flowers. I never really beaded flowers, so it was a learning experience. And through that, I um, sold a few pieces, but I don't really um, sell anything. I've been just 
making them to get leave from my family because um, we don't have any real heirlooms to pass on to our family, so that's why I needed them. And then um, this one over here is one that I needed, and this is kind of like um, the style was done because um, it was something that Melissa um, did an art piece, and I thought I would use it too, and it represents our, our um, Tulis from Fallon also. And the duck, this all kind of goes together as part of our traditional family ways. The collar was made, um, I'm a traditional dancer, and um, I had a, one of our grandmas 
Earth to West from Wapa River Paiute Tribe made it. And um, I designed it, gave her the beads, and and um, she she's a noted power maker, so I had to do this. And it's been a number of years and she's passed on. So um, I just wanted those people to see her work. Good afternoon, my name is Dale Bennett and I am a volunteer here at Stewart Indian School on Fridays from 10 to 4. I, I um, attended Stewart Indian School back in uh, 69 up to 73 and at this school I learned various um, things that I took with me throughout my life. And one of them is my beadwork. I uh, went to Stewart, like I said before, and I had gotten into some trouble, which I had to do hours. And by that, I mean, you couldn't leave the dorm except to go to school or to go to eat. And uh, my matron, Dolores Alice, I walked by her office and she was beading and it looked interesting, so I went in and I uh, was watching her and she asked me if I wanted to learn, which I did. And so she started me out with some bigger beads and I would say they were probably size 11. And uh, I finished a project she gave me, which was a small project. And she just wanted to see if I had the patience, I believe, and which I did. And so she started, gave me some smaller beads, which I started to do and I finished that project. And I was 13 years old when I learned how to be from my matron here. The matron had taught me? Uh-huh. Because I had hours, I got in trouble. Yeah. Um, she counted my beating as hours. So before I knew it, my hours were off and oh, I was able to go yay. outside and everything. But I would come back and sit down and bead. Yeah. The way I started is actually I string my string. Oh, okay. And if you if I put twenty beads on, if it goes around, if I put twenty beads on, it's gonna be nineteen beads that after you go every other one. Oh, okay. And so um if I did nineteen beads it would be eighteen that I would go around. Ah. So that's how you count your you start your design like you start uh, I know there's 44 beads on this wow and so I know I got to do like this black bead it'll be on the like the 11th one wow. there's 10 beads between it that's impressive so that's 40 and then the four black makes 44 cool so that's how you gotta <laughs> that's how you have to keep Starting track of it. Design, yeah. It's well, just a lot cool. of counting. I bet. I bet. So you just string a strand of beads, put it around, tie it, tie it in a knot and stuff. And then you get one bead and go through it. Do it's every other bead. Ah. So put one bead on, go through a bead, put another bead on, go through another bead. Then it leaves this pattern. Right here. Then when you put a bead on, it fills in the empty spot. Oh, that's cool. That's your other row. That's cool. So you go row by row. I never thought of it like that. Yeah. That's interesting. Put one bead on, and then I pull it through, and it fills in the gap. Better show your daughter this one on. So it's one bead at a time. Man. 
most important thing is counting your beads when you start your design. And that's how it's done. And this is a nylon thread. These are size 13 cut glass beads. And I do put um, duct tape under my beads because I don't want it glass rubbing against glass. So uh -huh. the duct tape kind of cushions, cushions it. Then like this one, I put buckskin underneath. Oh yeah, so it doesn't. Yeah, and I put my name inside the buckskin. So you can see it when you look in there. That's cool. That's cool. And I usually put one mismatch color in in there, and I'll let the person know who buys it in case it ever gets so sort of dull in, and you know they could, they could say oh, I know it's identify. mine because there's a different color bead. That's awesome. In the design. Ah. Oh. You know. So. so that's how it's done. Amazing. You can see my fingers right there, the callus on them. Someone ordered some moccasins, so I'll probably be doing a little pair of moccasins. And picture frames, because I do picture frames. And when babies are born, I'll put their first, middle, and last name on there with the their weight and the day they were born. Aww. I got two to make, one for a girl and one for a boy. And I did do a vest for Robert Redford with the sunburst. And I did beat a pole for Gomer Pyle. <laughs> cool. <laughs> and it was all for my beadwork. They wanted to put it in the Sundance catalog, but at the time I wasn't ready because it would have turned into a job. Well, Dale, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate you showing us and the beautiful exhibit that you guys have over there. And um, yeah, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.
Hi, I'm Linda Eben Jones, and I'm yes. one of the volunteers here at the museum. And um, <laughs> I'd like to welcome you into the exhibit of the student in the boarding school. The school opened in 1890 and closed in 1980. And um, we have a timeline here where you would start to go in, and everything's identified. And you can walk through yourself and read everything and help you understand the um, children coming here in their early 1800s and what they went through to, with the assimilation and, and the cultural genocide that occurred here. My, uh, my father was actually kidnapped and brought here in a wagon. And um, that's how he started through his time here. And he was about 10 years old. Um, I bidded this piece for the Stewart auction a couple couple years ago, and then I lost it when I moved back from Arizona. And I recently found it, and I decided I would give it to the museum and um, to put in their collection. It it was meant it was an auction fundraiser, but I felt that the, when the museum came about, that I could give it to the museum. So that's the start of. Um, some of the beadwork that we have in the show that was donated to the museum. <laughs> 